Akuma Soccer Universe. Well, let's have a look how the leagues are standing just before the Champions League starts. It was, in a way, a big weekend, um, especially in one league, but that's the league, Premier League, that we will look at last time. I'll do a similar tour as last time, where I start in Spain, geographically go east. This time I have the directions right, and then we move north and uh, see how things are going. So. I want to start in Spain at La Liga, um, where the Friday game was a nil nil draw between Mallorca and Athletic. Um, Real Madrid had some trouble with Levante. Now I know the uh, opponent, they were up 3 0 uh, quickly, but you know, we're missing a few players. In Azar made his debut, so I guess they were thinking at 3 0 they were cruising, then Levante pulls two back. But Real Madrid hangs on to a win and has actually a decent start to the season. Then Villarreal Leganes, um, a way win for Villarreal, 3 0. And then one of the bigger results this weekend is that Real Sociedad beat Atletico Madrid 2 0. Again, Atleti showing some cracks. Um, just at the moment when you thought, yes, they're going to make a title challenge, uh, they are really the favorites. Mm -hmm. They lose at Real Sociedad. Not a bad place to lose per se, because uh, many favorites um, slip up there, but still, um, you could have really put some distance between you and your opponents, but again, the opposite happened, because now um, Real Madrid is within a point, and Barcelona, we talked about yesterday, 5-2 against Valencia, is now within two points and striking distance. Uh, so yeah, that was Ansu Fati's, uh, I don't want to say coming out because he came out last week, <laughs> but um, now everyone knows that maybe there is a life after Messi for Barcelona, although I'm always careful. I mean, always careful with those uh, teenage sensations. Uh, you remember Odegaard? Yes, he plays in the Norwegian national team, but have you heard much of him otherwise? So, um, careful, maybe he's a sensation, maybe he, it's just a short fire that's lit uh, there. But yeah, with that, Barcelona, I don't want to say steady is the ship. I mean, they had a shitty start to, to the season with a loss and a draw away from home, but now you're looking um, with seven points. Uh, you're still within striking distance, um, and if we look at the odds, I think Barcelona is still the overwhelming favorite. And when I say odds, I mean, of course, um, 538. I don't want to use the book because yeah, Barcelona still has a 54% chance of winning the league, Real Madrid 20%, and Atletico Madrid 11%. Sevilla now 6% are moving slightly up. Uh, we'll see about that in a sec. So, um, then on Sunday, when we talk about Sevilla, uh, the early game, Espanyol won at A-bar 2-1, I think this got them off the night, and Sevilla gets a 1-0 against Alaves, I briefly tuned into that one, I think it was already 1-0 Sevilla, and, the, and at that moment the commentator said the game is really falling asleep, and that's when I said, okay, not gonna watch that one. Uh, Granada 2-0 at Celta uh, Vigo. That's a big win for Granada. Uh, then Real Valladolid won one against Asuna and same result between Real Betis and Getafe. So in the standings, we have now Sevilla, a new leader. Atletico Madrid, um, nine points. Real Madrid, eight. Atletic Club, also eight. So those really had a good start. But same thing can be said for Barcelona. Uh, seven points, Granada and Real Sociedad. Although, you, with, as I said, with a loss and a draw, Barcelona's start is one of the worst uh, in a long time. Um, then Levante Osasuna in the midfield, six points, same uh, with five, then Villarreal Alaves, Real Valladolid. Valencia has a real iffy start, uh, same points a total as Mallorca, but Valencia is a mess with all the firings and so on. Um, the Real Batis and Celta Vigo Espanyol all have four points. Getafe three, uh, Eibar one, and Leganes still waiting for the first win. Then let's move on in Ligue 1. And I forgot to say it yesterday, but I actually watched a teeny bit of a Ligue 1 game, uh, namely PSG against Strasbourg, the 1 0. I really want to see what the oh, welcome for Neymar and what a welcome it was. 
I think every time he touched the ball, he was whistled. Um, at the beginning, there were really chants against him, loud, audibly loud. And then uh, he gets the winner in Neymar fashion with a bicycle kick, um, where the ball hits the shin and goes in. And this is funny because Ronaldo tried to do the same against Fiorentina and it uh, didn't anywhere come close. So, you know, some sometimes the shin can make it, sometimes the shin giveth, sometimes the shin taketh. Um, also weird that PSG debuted their third kit in this match, but I have to say I actually liked it. I have not seen close-ups yet, but I actually really liked that kit. Uh, PSG used to, in the late 80s and early 90s, I will, shoot, will have a white kit at home, and that, basically in that look, so that was actually a really nice touch. But uh, Ligue 1 already had two games on Friday. Lille uh, beating Angers 2-1 and Amiens 2-2 against Lyon, so to get the Champions League teams some extra uh, days. Lyon, after a thundering start, is kind of stalling a little bit. Uh, Bordeaux 2-0 against Metz, Dijon Nîmes goalless, Montpellier Nice 2-1, Brest Rennes, another goalless um, uh, derby. Ah. Dijon Nîmes is not really a derby, but uh, Brest Rennes is a derby of the Bretagne and was goalless. Nantes Reims 1 0, Saint Etienne to lose 2 2, and Monaco Marseille 3 4. Hmm, should have watched that one. Should have watched that one instead of. Yeah, I watched N N NFL, but I should have watched that one instead of uh, Milan, then I would have seen two 3 4s uh, this uh, evening. Eh, I'm a little bit regretting that now. As I said, I have not really checked Liga. In the table, PSG, 12 points. Um, you don't have the feeling that they had a good start. They, lo they lost against the Rennes, but Rennes loses points elsewhere, namely in the derby against Brest. But they're still second in 10, and Nantes in, uh, also has 10. I actually like that Rennes and Nantes are really up there. Those are two teams that I have sympathy for. Marseille, 10, are also a good start. Lille, Nice, Angers, 9. And then Lyon, what happened? 8. Bordeaux 8, Toulouse 8, Reims 7, Montpellier 7, Brest 6, Nîmes 5, uh, same as Saint-Étienne, Amiens 4, Metz 4, Strasbourg 3, Monaco 2, Dijon 1. Interesting standings for now. Uh, I, I want to see whether Rennes and Nantes can actually uh, solidify their good starts or whether the big boys Lyon and Lille, Marseille uh, will actually move up. Also curious if Bordeaux will get into, in, into the running. And maybe with that Monaco-Marseille game, maybe I really should watch more Ligue 1 and less Serie A. But how can you blame me? They were again goals, goals, goals in Serie A. Not in the first game, Fiorentina Juventus, we talked about it. Nil-nil uh, draw. It was not dreary, but um, the game started bright and then kind of flattened out, petered out a little bit. Napoli Sampdoria never was the super clash that I imagined it to be. Uh, Napoli being quite efficient, um, getting with the first real uh, attack, getting the goal. And then, um, yeah, uh, dom dominating, but clearly being a little bit on the you know, effective side, let's let's put it try to preserve your energies. Um, and then Llorente comes in and immediately gets gives the assist. That, well, there was some discussions where it was offside, it was not offside in the end, it's given, it was 2-0. Uh, Llorente's assist to Mertens. And the funniest thing was when Mertens went to Llorente to um, thank him for the assist that Llorente is basically twice as tall as uh, Therese Mertens. I mean, Napoli now has a lot of flexibility up front with the uh, midgets, uh, Caecion, uh, Mertens and Insigne, and then you get uh, suddenly Llorente, gives you a completely different setup. So um, maybe Napoli is really gearing up for something. Inter gets kind of a messy win against Udine, where they had a hard time. Udine got an early red card, but um, only a single goal, but Inter still is on the winning way. The derby is coming up. Genoa Atalanta didn't see much of that, but Atalanta gets the win 2-1. Brescia Bologna, I saw that one, talked about it yesterday. Another 3-4. This is the third 3-4 or 4-3 in as many match days in Serie A. I uh, absolutely love it. And I was almost watching Parma against Cagliari, which still ended at a 1-3. So, um, but I was very happy to watch Brescia Bologna. 
Spal beats Lazio, that's a big win, 2-1. Uh, the other Roman team um, wins 4-2 against Sassuolo. However, it was 4-0 at the half, where Roma was scoring at will and you thought it's safe. They hit even the uh, woodwork once more, but Sassuolo pulls two back and it was a little bit more shaky. Shaky is what I would describe Milan's win at Hellas Verona. They get the win. And then uh, Torino had the big chance a little, uh, to actually get in there and uh, match Inter's uh, points total. But nope, they, all, they lose at home to Lecce 2-1. Kind of uh, let Le Lecce gets out of nowhere the lead in the 35th. Um, Torino then really uh, is, do is dominant, gets in the second half a penalty, and from that moment on, Lecce again is the better team. And in the end, uh, the last surge of Torino is not enough. So Lecce gets the first win in the season, meaning that we have a somewhat surprising standings. Uh, Inter is not a surprise that they are on uh, top, but then Bologna at 7, Juventus at 7. Bologna having a really good start, which is kind of the opposite of what they had last season. I, for one, would like to see Bologna do well, honestly. Uh, that's a team that should be in Serie A. Juventus 7, um, Napoli 6. Note the only loss at Napoli, the loss at Napoli was to Juventus. So Napoli, in a way, still very well on its way. Atalanta also six, Torino six, Milan six, um, Roma only five, but they finally got the win after two draws. Lazio four, Genoa four, Hellas Verona four. Then Sassuolo, uh, Cagliari, Brescia, Parma, Spal, Udine, Lecce. This is those are all teams that already orient themselves to, themselves to the bottom, all with three points. And then the bottom two are kind of uh, big name, biggish name teams. Fiorentina only one point, um, but there is a loss to Napoli in there. There is a draw against um, Juve in there. So, you know, they had a tough opening program. And then Sampdoria nil um, also. Yeah, they were, they are a little bit, I'm more worried for Sampdoria than for Fiorentina. But yeah, Italy shaping up good. <sighs> Again, I love Serie A. Lots of goals scored now. Um, I guess I'm going to continue watching. Let's move north to the Bundesliga. Uh, we talk already a little bit about it. Uh, Düsseldorf Wolfsburg gets a 1-1. Uh, Bremen wins 2-1 at Union. So Union cannot follow up on their home win against um, Dortmund. Mainz, Hertha 2-1. Uh, kind of a blow for Hertha. Then the big one, Dortmund against Leverkusen. That game was open for a long time. And then in the end, Dortmund pulls away and gets a 4-0 win. Again, underlining... We might, this might be our year. Everyone tips is saying Dortmund, and I just don't quite believe it yet. I just don't quite believe it yet, especially the the way they have been winning games, especially before the international break. They were always behind, and then uh, losing at Union. I don't know, but let's see. Uh, I want to see them against Bayern, then we can talk. Frankfurt ah, is so shaky, to be honest. I mean, they lost many players, but losing uh, away to Augsburg. Um, it might be a long season for them. The Köln loses the derby at home to Gladbach 1-0 and we talk about Leipzig-Bayern. I maintain it was kind of a lucky point for Leipzig. Uh, Bayern should have won this one. So 1-1. One, one. Then on Sunday, uh, Freiburg wins at Hoffenheim 3-0 and Schalke 5-1 at Paderborn. So in the standings now, Leipzig on top with 10 and Dortmund right behind with 9 points. Freiburg, great start to the season, 9 points. Uh, Bayern and Wolfsburg also pretty good, 8 and eight points each. Uh, Schalke, you know, they were in the, on the, doing the bottom half. Last year, very near near to bottom. Now Schalke has also a good start with seven uh, points out of four games, same as Gladbach and Leverkusen. Frankfurt, as I said, two wins, two losses, and some of those, at least the loss to Augsburg, is a head scratcher. Bremen also six points. Düsseldorf four, Union four, Hoffenheim four, Augsburg four. Kind of, you know. The Bundesliga is so even overall. Köln. Yeah, now it doesn't look as good anymore. They got their win early, but now they have uh, consecutive losses. So three points only there. Mainz also three points. And Paderborn and Hertha really, really, really uh, need to get some something going. Especially for Hertha, I'm getting worried. 
And that leaves us with the last league, which is, of course, the Premier League. Um, I'm wearing Liverpool, and that was the first game. Liverpool going down to Newcastle uh, early at home, but then uh, Mane puts uh, quickly two goals before the half. Second one, absolute scream, and then uh, Salah's goal. Uh, if you haven't seen the assist by Firmino, absolute world class. Wonderful, wonderful. Liverpool, um, you know, at the beginning of the season, you thought that their wins, they get the wins, that VAG is important, but uh, it's not as convincing. But that win was overall quite convincing. So, I mean, Liverpool really, five out of five, having a great start to the season. I think um, they will be a force to watch again for this season. Tottenham, Crystal Palace gets a relatively easy 4-0 win. Uh, I think it was 4-0 at halftime. Uh, and Son really having a great uh, game. Manchester United a little bit more of a messy win against Leicester City. 1-0. Southampton gets the win at Sheffield United. Um, I think there was some controversy in there. Don't recall uh, re-recall re re it now uh, with Sheffield United being the title penalty or something like that. Uh, Brighton against Burnley 1-1 and then the Abraham show at Chelsea 5-2 win. I think Chelsea was up 4-0 uh, at the half or something like that. Three goals by Abraham and then he pulls in an own goal and um, Kutrone scores one for Wolves. I... I'm on the uh, side where I'm actually sad that Cotrone had to leave Milan. And then the big one, Norwich City against Manchester City. We talked briefly about yesterday. It bears repeating. Uh, Manchester City's defense was shambolic. I know Laporte is missing. Uh, but what Otamendi did on the third Nor Norwich goal is inexcusable. You have to have the awareness that you're being pressed high. Um, and I really think that Manchester City was not taking that game too seriously because everyone, I, I know when uh, Norwich lost uh, Liverpool to start the season, everyone said that they're naive and I think this is kind of the narrative that they fell into. So Manchester City has already in two games this season dropped points. Um, is it their rough start to begin at, at, at the beginning of the season? We will see. I, I, I will we'll look at the standings and, and so on. What, what this at least means at the projected uh, standings. But definitely a uh, very shaky start for Manchester City at the season. Uh, Bournemouth 3-1 against Everton. And we talk about Watford Arsenal. Uh, that in the end was a one point for our Arsenal. They threw away a Tony lead. Watford should have won that game. And West Ham could have um, gone all the way up to Manchester City again to match the 10 points similar to Arsenal and also did manage only 0-0 at Aston Villa. And now in the standings we have Liverpool 15 points, already 5 points clear of the rest. Manchester City only 10. With a shaky start, Manchester City is still second but way off the pace I would say. Spurs, United, Leicester, Chelsea and Arsenal and West Ham all 8 points. But if you look at it, uh, the top six are only broken up by Leicester City. Uh, West Ham could have gone in there. So uh, remember, West Ham has a really bad goal difference uh, due to, uh, I think, 5-0 thumping by City. So that kills that, them a little bit. But again, it has a certain familiarity to the top six, except for Leicester City. Maybe Leicester City can break into that one. Uh, we're losing to Manchester United. Yeah, it's you can lose to Manchester United away from home. Uh, still doesn't mean much. Then we have Bournemouth, Southampton, Everton and Crystal Palace at 7. Norwich, uh, 6 points. I think they will stay up. Burnley, 5. Sheffield, 5. Brighton, 5. And then Aston Villa, it was always going to be a tough season. I mean, the playoff winner rarely does well. Newcastle will have a hard season. And I don't know about Wolves and Watford. Those were really strong teams last season. And they're not off to great starts. Um, maybe it takes them a while. Maybe it's kind of for Wolves the second season that they need to go from. Also, you know, some firings in there. But, you know, I hope that they will get something going and uh, go towards mid-table where I think at the moment they belong. But I want to also look with the Manchester City loss. I want to look at the projected uh, standings. What does the does it mean? And I want to uh, show you what we had just before the international break, where we had Manchester City having almost a 60% chance of winning the league, 59%, Liverpool 36%. And at that point, Liverpool had already a two-point advantage. Now they have a five-point advantage. And 
suddenly it's a lot closer. Manchester City just by a hair, still the favorites, 47%, but Liverpool now 46%. So there was a huge swing um, between those two. Uh, this one win, but City are still just by a hair favorites. You see the projected table by 538 has them both at 87 points. Uh, just Manchester City having a better goal difference. And maybe in the end that will be the decisive factor. Anyway, I think if you're a Liverpool fan, you like your chances at the moment. But you know, um, there's always a time where you can hit a rough patch and that uh, will happen. It will happen. The question is, will have Manchester City two rough patches this season? Or, uh, will they just fall off right now? And that remains to be seen. Tonight, Champions League. Very excited about that one. And yeah, we have some interesting matches coming up uh, on the weekend as well. Namely, the Milan Dower Derby is basically the biggest name game. But I'm not looking forward to that one, honestly. Okay, uh, let me know what you thought about uh, the standings, whether you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel to stay updated on everything in the European leagues, in my channel, jerseys, Champions League. We'll see. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.